abstraction is a key concept in programming as it can drastically simplify both implementation and code maintenance. It is particularly well suited to Spark and its modular analysis. This course explains what state abstraction is and how it can be specified in Spark. We will provide details on how it impacts GNAP Proof's analysis both in terms of information flow and in terms of proof of program properties. The abstraction principle is commonly used in programming languages and it consists in having two views of the same object, an abstract one and a refined one. The abstract one, usually called specification, only describes what the object does in a coarse way. A subprogram specification usually explains how it should be called, how many parameters it has, of which type, etc., as well as what it will do, return a result, modify one of its parameters, etc. Contract based programming, supported in ADA 2012, allows contracts to be added to a subprogram specification. Contracts can be used to describe the subprogram's behavior in a more fine grained manner. All the details of how the subprogram actually works are left to the refined view, in this case, its implementation. Take a look at the example code shown here. The specification of the subprogram called increase states that it should be called on a unique argument, which should be a variable of type integer smaller than 100. Via this contract, it ensures that its only effect will be to strictly increase the value of an argument. To obtain a good abstraction of a subprogram's implementation, its specification should summarize exactly what users of an object can rely on. In other words, user code should not rely on the behavior of an object's implementation if it is not documented in its specification. For example, callers of the subprogram increase can assume that it will always strictly increase the value of its argument. In our user code snippet shown here, it means that the loop is bound to terminate. They can also assume that the implementation of increase won't cause any runtime error when called in the loop. However, on the other hand, the assertion may fail if increase's implementation is changed. If this basic principle is followed, abstraction can bring significant advantages. It simplifies both the program's implementation and its verification, and often it is enough to understand the specification of an object to use it which is in general simpler than trying to understand its actual implementation. It also makes maintenance and code reuse that much easier, as changes to the implementation of an object won't affect the code using this object. Subprograms are not the only objects that can benefit from abstraction. The state of a package, that is the set of persistent variables defined in it, can also be hidden from external users. This form of abstraction, called state abstraction, is usually achieved by defining variables in the body or private part of a package, so that they can only be accessed through subprogram calls. For example, here our stack package shown provides an abstraction for a unique stack object, which can be modified using the pop and push subprograms. The fact that it is implemented using an array is irrelevant to the user and could be changed without impacting user code. As the hidden state influences the program's behavior, Spark allows it to be declared. For this, a named state abstraction can be introduced using the abstract underscore state aspect. This is not mandatory even for a package which has hidden state. Several state abstractions can also be introduced for the hidden state of a single package or for a package with no hidden state at all. Note, however, that Spark does not allow aliasing Different state abstractions must always refer to disjoint sets of concrete variables. Note also that a state abstraction is not a variable. It does not have a type and cannot be used inside expressions, be they in bodies or in contracts. For the example stack package, we can optionally define either a state abstraction for the whole hidden state of the package, like in our first snippet, or in the second snippet, one for each hidden variable. Once an abstract state has been declared for a package, it must be refined into its constituents using a refined underscore state aspect. This must be placed on the package's body, even if the package previously did not require a body. For each state abstraction declared for the package, 
the refined state lists the set of variables which are represented by this state abstraction. If an abstract state is specified for a package, then it must be complete, in the sense that every hidden variable must be part of a state abstraction. For example, on our stack packages body, we must add a refined underscore state aspect, linking the state abstraction the underscore stack that we have introduced to the whole hidden state of the package, including both content and top. State abstractions are always refined in the package's body where all the variables are visible. When only the package specification is available, we need a way to specify to which state abstraction private variables belong. This is done using the part underscore of aspect on the variables declaration. Part underscore of annotations are mandatory. If a package has an abstract state annotation, then all the hidden state defined in its private part must be linked to a state abstraction. For example, shown here, if we choose to define content and top in stack's private part instead of its body, then we must add a part of aspect to both their declarations, associating them with the state abstraction the underscore stack, even though it is the only state abstraction defined in stack. Note that they still need to be listed in the refined underscore state aspect in stack's package body. Until now, we have only spoken of hidden variables, but variables are not the only constituents of a package's state. If a package P contains a nested package, then the nested package's state is part of P's state. As a consequence, if the nested package is hidden, its state is part of P's hidden state and must be listed in P's state refinement. This is the case in our example shown here, where the package hidden nested's hidden state is part of P's hidden state. Note that a visible part of hidden nested would also have been part of P's hidden state. Also note that if P contains a visible nested package, then the nested package's state is not part of P's hidden state. In particular, its hidden state should be declared in a separate state abstraction on its own, like it is done in our example shown here for visible underscore nested. Other possible constituents of a state abstraction are constants with variable inputs. We call constants with variable inputs constants whose value depends on either a variable or a subprogram parameter. Those are usually handled as variables in flow analysis, as they participate in the flow of information between variables throughout the program. Thus constants with variable inputs, just like variables, are considered to be part of a package's state. If a state abstraction is specified for a package, then hidden constants with variable inputs declared in this package must be listed in the state abstraction refinement. Note that on the other hand, constants without variable inputs do not participate to the flow of information and therefore cannot appear in a state refinement. In our example shown here called max, the ordinal number of elements that can be stored in the stack is initialized with a variable from an external package. Since it now has variable inputs, max must be a part of the state abstraction the underscore stack. As hidden variables can only be accessed through subprogram calls, subprogram contracts are the proper way of documenting how state abstractions can be modified during the program's execution. First off, global and depend contracts can be used to specify which are the state abstractions as accessed by a subprogram and how their values throw, flow through the different variables. Note that global and depend contracts referring to state abstractions may be less precise than contracts referring to visible variables, as the different modes of the hidden variables aggregated in a state abstraction are collapsed into a single mode. For example, shown here, the pop procedure only modifies the value of the hidden variable top and keeps content unchanged. If two distinct state abstractions are used for the two variables, then this contract is preserved. On the other hand, if they are collapsed into one single state abstraction, we lose the fact that content is preserved, only keeping the fact that the underscore stack is modified. This loss in precision is reasonable here. It is the whole point of abstraction. But users must be careful not to aggregate unrelated hidden state lest their annotations become meaningless. 
If imprecise contracts dealing with state abstraction as a whole are perfectly reasonable for users of a package, global and depends contracts should remain as precise as possible inside the package's body itself. For this reason, Spark introduces the notion of refined contracts. These are precise contracts specified on the bodies of subprograms where state refinements are visible. These contracts are exactly like normal global and depends contracts, except they refer directly to the hidden state of the package. When a subprogram is called inside the package's body, these refined contracts are used instead of the general ones, so that the verification can be as precise as possible. Note that refined, global and depend contracts are optional. If they are not specified by the user, the tool will compute them to check the package's implementation. Functional properties of subprograms are usually expressed using pre and post conditions. As these contracts are standard Boolean expressions, they cannot refer directly to state abstractions. To work around this restriction, functions can be defined to query the value of hidden variables. These functions can then be used in place of the state abstraction in other subprograms contracts. That is what is done in this example, where we define two functions accessing the state of the stack is empty and is full, and use them to specify the procedure push. As for global and depends contracts, it is often useful to have a more precise view of functional contracts when the hidden variables are visible. This can be achieved using expression functions. As expression function bodies act as contracts for GNAP Proof, they automatically give a more precise version of the contracts when their implementation is visible. It may be the case that we need a more constraining contract to verify the package's implementations than we want to ensure outside the abstraction. This can be achieved using the refined post aspect. This aspect, when placed on a subprogram's body, is used to provide stronger guarantees to internal callers of a subprogram. If provided, the refined post condition must imply the subprogram's post condition. This is checked by GNAP Proof, who will report a failing post condition if the refined post condition is too weak, even if it is actually implied by the subprogram's body. Note that Spark does not supply a similar notation for preconditions. As part of flow analysis, GNAP Proof checks for proper initialization of variables. Therefore, flow analysis needs to know which of the variables initialized during the package's elaboration. The initializes aspect can be used to specify the set of visible variables and state abstractions of a package that are initialized during its elaboration. Note that an initializes aspect cannot refer to a variable that is not defined in the unit as in Spark 2014, a package shall only initialize variables declared immediately within the package. Initialize aspects are optional. If they are not supplied by the user, they will be computed by GNAP Proof. As flow analysis can also check for dependencies between variables, it must be aware of information flowing through initialization of states. The initializes aspect also serves this purpose. If the initial value of a variable or state abstraction is dependent on a value of a visible variable or state abstraction from another package, then this dependency must be listed in the initializes contract. The list of entities on which a variable's initial value depends are associated to the variable, variable using an arrow. In our example, we stated in the initialize aspects of P that V2's initial value depends on the value of external underscore variable. Note that we omitted the dependency for v1, as its initial value does not depend on any external variable. This dependency could also have been stated explicitly, writing v1 with the arrow to null. Dependencies of initial values can be computed by the tool if no initializes aspect is supplied. On the other hand, if an initializes aspect is provided for a package, then it should be complete. That is, every initialized state of the package should be listed, along with all its external dependencies. That concludes the slides section of this lecture, and we shall now move on to the quiz section.
Please review the code on this slide and click the yes tick icon if you believe the code is correct. Otherwise, click the line of code you think is wrong. Once you have made your selection, please click the submit button. Here is the correct answer to the question. Once you have understood the answer, please click anywhere on the slide to proceed to the next question. This concludes this current lecture. We'd like to welcome you back to the Edicore University in the future to further your knowledge of Ada programming language and SPA. Thank you for your attendance.